All right, guys, we are in Camden, Maine. It's Jeremy, and I am so happy to be back. It is winter in Maine, so it is time to get out and do something wintry and exciting. So today, we're gonna go ice climbing. I've never been before, so I'm really looking forward to it, and I wanted to bring you guys along. On top of that, we're gonna go meet uh, the owner of uh, French and Braun in downtown Camden, and then we're also gonna get a tour of the fire station, so I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you are too. We got a lot to do. Let's go get it. It's snowing and we are here. It is time to do some ice climbing. We are off of Old Carriage Road, heading up Mount Batty. It, uh, it's icy, but I guess that's uh, kind of what you need for, for ice climbing. So uh, Noah's up at the trailhead. Gonna go meet up with him real quick and uh, we're gonna get this thing started. What's going on, man? Hi, how's it going? Good, I'm Jeremy. I'm Noah. Perfect. Nice to meet you. <sighs> All right, Ready so some ice climbing. Yes, brief me. What in the world are we doing today? Well, we are going in to do some ice climbing um, at this place called the Cataracts, Ooh. and uh, yeah, it's I like be it. Pretty fun. We're not going to go blind, are we? No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, how much of a hike do we have in? We have about a mile hike um, to some pretty mellow climbing. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be sweet. Sweet, so obviously I'm not gonna film like this for the entire mile, so <laughs> we're gonna do some B-roll on the way there. So we'll see what we do. So sweet. Do you like my helmet? I do. Brings up my eyes. So we're gonna start with this. Oh, hey guys, I know the lens is all foggy. I know there's snow all over it because that's what's happening right now. So here's the thing: if you want to feel like you're a part of this with me and Noah, and if you're part of the New England fan base that's watching this right now, um. Just stop what you're doing if you're on a laptop. Just go ahead and step outside on your porch. And just go ahead and sit down for a minute. We'll wait. Okay, so now you feel, you kind of feel it. You're here with us right now. Okay, anyways, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> cool, so uh, we're gonna go off this ice thing. So we got crampons on, right? Um, and uh, they're pretty sweet because they're, they got spikes all over the place, which is cool. Um, but they got these good spikes in the front, right? So we're gonna jam this kind of part into the ice and then we're gonna kind of sit on these secondary points. These things are pretty cool. They're like all this whole shape and like how this whole thing is designed is uh, like the perfect angle for swinging and for hitting the ice basically. Um, and basically what you're doing is trying to get this blade to like go down in, right? So the important part is the like flick at the end. See that little flick? Look. Instead of like, you think of like going like this, right? But if you get that flick right at the end, then this is kind of like getting forced down into the ice. Do you see that? Okay. Got so, it. Uh, okay, so uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but uh, we're going to try to vlog and I slap at the same time. <laughs> so the footage will be shaky if I use it. It will be off center, but if you want to come up, this is this is what we got to do. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's go crush it. Remember when I say go discover something awesome? This right here is awesome. So let's just go get it. Vlogging and climbing. This is where we're gonna try to take you guys next. 
the cool thing there's still like a, a stream a water vein running so as you're doing this you can actually hear that So I was just telling, telling them right now, my next step is uh, French and Braun, and then uh, we're actually gonna go check out the fire department. And uh, he was just telling me something really rad. Like, what do you guys do? What, what's in your company motto? What, what is part of what you do to be involved in the community? Yeah, so we're on the Lincolnville rescue team as like a mountain rescue crew. And so we go and do trainings once a month with them and do um, a lot of like the high angle rescue stuff. So. That's we do so a lot cool. of the rigging and that sort of stuff is what we're always training to do. Yep. Uh, hopefully we'll never have to do it, but it's it's fun to go and yeah. give back to the community and be able to support support those, those opportunities, which is pretty cool. And it's cool for me too, because I'm like training and learning all that stuff, uh, which is awesome. So That's sick. Yeah. So it's that same idea we've been talking about from day one, guys, that sense of community and just taking it to the next step. So now that you're out and about in the community, you're part of that community, what, what, what can we do to help serve that community? What can we help do? Obviously, he has a very unique skill set, so it just makes sense to utilize that. But this isn't the only thing you can do. There's all kinds of stuff, guys. So I do encourage you to get involved, get into those town meetings, see what they need, see what you have to provide to help out. It takes a community. It takes everybody. It takes him, it takes me, it takes you. So we're gonna hike out of here and uh, desperately need that coffee. So we're gonna go get that right now. Back in Camden, we're at French of Bronze. We're gonna go in, get some coffee, find out the history of this place. Oh, can't wait for that coffee. It was really good last time. Let's go. Bye. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Really appreciate you meeting me, man. No problem. All right, so Todd, I really appreciate you having me here again. Um, I came in a couple weeks ago to do the star. We know it started on the side, but that's all I know. Like, how has this place been around for 150 years? Basically, that's a long time. Yeah, basically French and Braun started in 1868, a little over 150 years ago. Uh, it started as a small store similar to this. Over the years, it's changed. Different people uh, have come on to own it. There's usually been two owners at a time, or an outgoing and an in, you know incoming. So the name keeps changing. It was Carlton and Pascal, Pascal and French, Carlton and French, and then in, I believe in C3 became French and Braun because a Braun was coming in and Carlton French was leaving, and so Bill Braun owned it for about 17, 18 years. And then his brother, uh, son bought it, Jeff Braun, uh, in 1977, and he had it till 93 or so. And then I came into the picture. Uh, I was in Camden looking to buy a hardware store because that's what I really wanted to do. And there was a store available. Started investigating that. Had met Jeff and some other business owners in the area, and we're just talking about what did the town need for a new store. For better or worse, the hardware thing didn't uh, come through, so I ended up talking to Jeff some more, and during our, some of our conversations, he started to mention that he might be willing to sell French and Braun. And as soon as he said that, I jumped all over it because I had been in here several times in the spring, winter, and summer and saw how vibrant it was year-round. And I said, I could really have fun being involved with this kind of place. He is the value of French and Braun to the community is that most people have noticed we don't close for snowstorms. If there's a snowstorm, as long as there's people out and about, we'll have three or four people in here working. My wife and I have come down here on snowstorms and opened up the store and just given the plow guys coffee and whoever makes it in, we'll, we'll stay open. As long as we have customers, we'll stay open. So that's, um, we're also open 364 days a year. We close for Christmas. That's the only day of the year we close. Um, and it's once again, that whole being part of community, being active, being around, and you know, like I said, don't come in here if you're in a hurry because you're going to be in here for a while. But you know, another part of being community, and I had been here for two or three years, and I realized I wanted to be more, I needed to do more, I needed to do something outside of the store. And I looked at various clubs and stuff, and I was just thinking that wasn't my kind of thing. And all of a sudden, one day, the fire department hit me, 
And I thought that's something I could really get involved in. It's a lot of things I like to do. And so in 1997, no, I'm sorry, 2001, in the spring of 2001, I, I went over to our local fire department and joined up to see what that was all about and see how I could help there. Oh my gosh, so what do you do over there? Uh, I've actually, after 17 years or so, I'm now an assistant chief there. Uh, I've been a firefighter, I'm still a firefighter, but I became an assistant chief a year last year. Oh, that's awesome. We got to check that out. Can we check that out? Sure we can. Do you have permission to take us over? I do. Every little boy, every grown man wants to see a fire truck up close. It, it's okay. If you're feeling that way right now, it's completely normal. But we're gonna go do that. So, um, yeah, let's go check that out. Head on up. Oh boy, this day just keeps getting better and better. Ice climbing was epic. But right now, we're heading into the fire station. We're gonna go see these guys and see what's up. How's it going? Hey man, I'm Jeremy. Matt, nice to Matt, meet you. Pleasure. Welcome to the Cannon Fire Department. Oh yeah. Come on in. Ah, it's a lot warmer in here than outside. All right, man, so what's, uh, what's the scoop? How does this work? If you get a call, like right now, like what happens? What do you guys, what do you guys do? How do you mobilize? So basically people get a page, they come on in here if they're yeah. available, they get dressed, they come over here and they're gonna ride on that first truck, engine so four. Cool. Engine four, and then any people left over are gonna probably ride on the ladder. And on these two trucks, you've got everything oh, to man. handle every situation you can probably think of. You've got car accidents, fires, yep. anything you can think of, and everything's on these trucks. This thing is decked out. How many people does it take to run this truck? Well, there's room for six on the truck. Um, you can do it with four. Um, yeah. But six is ideal. Six is ideal. Is that just for this truck or is that kind of all the trucks here? What's your ideal number? Six. Fill them up if you can. Oh my gosh. Um, yep. On, for a fire, ideally you'd have about 16 people at minimum. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yep. It's become very evident immediately this truck is loaded and there is multiple. How many trucks are here? There's five. Five, five trucks. Five and a boat. Five and a boat. We got to B-roll this thing like right now. Okay, <laughs> so those guys made that look fairly easy. Like, how often do you guys practice your gear on, gear off? Do you do that just for calls or just for fun? Every time we do a call, and then usually during training, so they'll get in the gear, so okay. quite often, yeah. Are you, you wanna try? I, I definitely have to try. All right, um, what, are we, what are we looking at for a time? What's, what's a good time, what's bad time? So you should be able to do it under two minutes. That's the standard, two minutes or under. So okay, you can do it, no problem. Okay, how would I go about? Well, I'll show you. Tell me the quick process. I don't want you to give away all the secrets. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, well, I'll just go through real quick. Obviously, you want to take your shoes off. You're going to put this Nomex hood on. Okay. You're going to step into your boots, pull up your suspenders, mm -hmm. come down, throw on your coat, turn on your pack, throw that on like a backpack, clip it in, put on your mask. Oh, gosh, there's more stuff under here. Put on your helmet. Put on your gloves, connect to your air, your, uh, air hose, and there you go. Do you think the mask will, uh, will fit? Do you think if I, we, should, we, I, should I braid this? We will try. Real quick, we'll try. a Viking braid or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. If you want. Okay, well, how are we going to keep time? How are we going to do this? I mean, well, I think the, uh, the chief might be able to help us out if he's around here. Oh, yeah. I got you right here. You got the timer? I got the timer. Okay. Well, great. All right. So, I've only got six layers on anyway. All right. Ready? Ready. All right. Call it, Chief. Ready? Set. Begin. Uh, 
want to do some stuff in it? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. All right, well, let's go. Let's do it. Oh, gosh. I can see you right there. Let's go. All right, so we got this confined space tunnel. And uh, basically, we're going to try to go in and this simulates a, a collapsed floor or ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we go out and crawl underneath to get to the other side. And through that hole, get kind of on your side with your pack turned and just kind of crawl your way through. But you see the whole size of that hole, right? I do. I do. Yeah, you I see, do. You got, like all of this? I do. I know Christmas is over, but I'm not like Santa Claus. Yeah. You do the whole yeah, no. thing. Yeah. Well, you can try and we'll see. Maybe you can. Maybe you just never tried. It does look a little better with the visor down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a shot. All right. Let's do it. Is this a good hold? Should I try to collect all the nope, no stragglers? Right there. The stragglers. That's fine. Okay. Put that in first. Here we go. Get that down. Protect those beautiful eyes. Right. Here we go. Nice. You can see. Push off. It's a lot more fun than it looks. Yeah, you should do that on your free time. Yep. Oh, nice job. And I thought it was gonna be. Did you have fun? I had a blast. Yeah, but that, uh, that's tight. Yeah, that's so tight. It's just like, and then there's like all the. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's only a small part of it. There's so much more to it than that. Dude, it was but, a blast though. It was a lot of fun. Like, what what else would you guys do? Well, it could be anything. It could be practicing cutting up cars, could be pulling hose lines, putting out fires, Sweet. you name it. Ice water rescue, nice. whole bunch of stuff. So are you, are you guys, do you have too many volunteers? No, actually uh, we don't have enough. And that's kind of a, a thing right now all across the United States is there's not enough people to do the job. Um, so staffs are running really low and yep. uh, it's dangerous if you don't have as many people as you should. Yep. So I encourage anybody if you're out, if you're out there and you're, you know, you want to help, um, this is a great way to do it, and uh, it does take some time and some effort. But if you put it in, it'll be really rewarding. And um, anywhere needs your help, see what you that's can do. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I really appreciate you, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. All right. I'm absolutely. Back. So, guys, that's what it is. You know, what we keep talking about that sense of community, getting out, serving, getting to know people. What's that next step? That next steps stepping into a role in the community that it needs. You know. Go to your local fire department, get a hold of them, and just go from there. But, uh, guys, until I see you again, I'm gonna make sure you get out. I need two hands to drive this thing, so I'm gonna get ahead of What's he doing in the truck? Hey, what's he doing? Get him out of the truck. What's he doing? I've got it. I'll respond to this one, guys. And remember, guys, until next time. Go discover something awesome. Like this truck. Do you hear this horn?